This is the mug rug that I'm going to use to demonstrate adding the quilt as you go rays that simulates what you'll do when it comes to your rainbow sunshine mini quilt. I have just used a lid to trace this circle that will become my sun when I go to add the, the top applique onto here. And so now I'm getting ready to add the rays. You'll wanna make sure that you've added your backing fabric to your mini quilt um, to make sure that you have that stability behind it as you add your rays. Okay, there's a couple of things to think about when you are adding your rays. The first is I like to have a center point or a focal point on my, um, in the center of my sun that I can use to kind of point all of my rays towards one spot. Now this isn't necessarily just like one little bitty dot. I like to do a little bit of a circle to um, just kind of have a general area to aim for. In this example, I usually go right around the center of the sun, sometimes a little lower, sometimes a little higher, and I will actually just draw right on my batting a little circle in the center of my what will become my sun so that I know where I'm aiming when I go to add all of my rays. And that just helps kind of keep everything pointing in the same direction so that you don't have any wonkiness going on. The second thing that you want to be mindful of as you're preparing to add your rays is the distribution of color around your, um, around your sun. So in this case, I am putting together a rainbow version. So I have, um, for my mini quilt, I'm actually probably gonna include all of these fabrics. For um, this mug rug, I am just doing one of each of the colors. So one of each of the colors is eight. So what I typically will do is kind of divide the center of my sun. Now, not necessarily the center of my mug rug, but the center of my sun, and that will kind of be where I aim to have the first four colors kind of land and then the next four colors kind of land. Now, in this case, because I have offset my sun a little bit, I may fudge the... Um, you know, the halfway point a little bit in this direction because there's a lot more land over here than there is real estate over here. But um, you don't necessarily have to do that. I just think it gives it a more balanced look if you have all of your colors kind of evenly distributed. Now, if you're doing kind of a scrappy version like I am with my pink one, it doesn't really matter and you can just kind of keep going until your whole background is filled. But if you're doing something where you want to manage the distribution of color, the first thing I do is kind of count the number of colors or the number of pieces I'm going to be adding. And then I kind of um, sketch out my rainbow. Sometimes I've done rainbows with just five colors. Sometimes I've done rainbows with, you know, 10. And so you just kind of want to make sure that the middle of your rainbow falls right about the middle of your sun. All right, once we have that decided, then the, we're going to get ready to start adding our, um, adding our rays. And one other hint with that, especially if you're working with like scraps, sometimes I will even take and start kind of laying out my colors first. And that way I can see, um, I've cut some big pieces here because I have yardage that I'm working from. But if I'm working with scraps, sometimes I'll lay them out to make sure that I have enough scraps to cover my whole surface. Or if I need to cut some more or find some more, um, it helps to kind of have that. And then you can even audition them. If you have auditioned your rays and you kind of know where you want them to be, my suggestion is to take a picture of it because once you pull them off of your batting to be able to start sewing them down, you kind of want to remember what order they were in and how they went. And even if you try to like carefully move them, sometimes things get moved. It's just always nice to have that record. You can delete it once it's done. It's just nice to have. All right, now we're ready to add our first rays. Okay. We're going to start with our first ray. I'm gonna line it up with the bottom here, and I like to have it extend a little bit above where my aiming point is going to be. Um, that way I can add just a little bit of an angle on this, even this first row. You want to make sure that the ends of your strip extend at least a quarter of an inch past your circle, and you'll see that there's places where it extends well past a quarter of an inch. We'll come back in and trim that up once we have this sewn down. 
So the first one I will just place and then I will take my next color and typically what I will do is line it up with this edge here and then I'll kind of hold that in place and pivot this piece of fabric until this end is pointing at my center aiming point. And you'll see that I have some red exposed up here and that's exactly what I want. I have this little bit of an angle and I know that my ray is gonna be pointing at that spot. Now, you're gonna sew this down using a quarter inch seam allowance. So your actual center point is gonna be a little bit lower than that, which is totally fine. That's kind of why we're aiming for a general area and not one specific spot, because trying to aim where the seam allowance is gonna be, we just don't wanna to have to mess with that. All right, so I'm gonna line up this end and then I'm going to sew along this edge using a quarter inch seam allowance. Now there is one other thing to think about, especially as you're working your way up this side of your um, mini quilt. And that is once you've sewn this down and you flip it up, it's going to be at an angle because you're kind of sewing it at an angle. Now if I had trimmed this so that it was straight down here when I went to flip it up. So we're gonna fold it over and pretend that I've cut it already thinking, oh look, I'm just gonna trim it and get this extra fabric out of my way. Once you have sewn it up, now you see you have a gap here from the end of your fabric to the edge of your batting. So you wanna make sure that you have plenty of fabric extending beyond the edge of your batting to make sure that when you go to flip it up, it covers it all the way to the edge of the batting. And this is especially true if your pieces are wider, um, it covers more area and that angle is gonna be a little bit greater. So make sure that you leave plenty of fabric off of the edge of your batting, especially up this way. It's not as big a deal because on this side, this is your longer edge and then when you flip it down, you're gonna have extra off of the edge. So it's kind of the opposite on this side. So it's just going up this first side that you need to make sure that you have plenty of fabric to cover the whole batting as you work your way up. All right, so I have that sewn with my quarter inch seam allowance. The last thing that we're gonna do before we move on to adding all the rest of our rays is we are going to first begin by trimming this extra red fabric over. Now this fabric is pretty saturated and you may not see much shadowing behind that orange fabric. But when you go to add, say, your yellow fabric on top, or if it was a much lighter hue, you would definitely see that red underneath. So what I'll do is just come in with a pair of scissors, and I'm just going to lift up this fabric away from my batting, and I'm going to trim off any of that fabric that's poking up underneath the first one. So you can see sometimes you got to get in there just a little bit, and it doesn't have to be... You don't have to make sure you're leaving a quarter inch. It's more important that you get rid of any of the darker fabric underneath it. And then once you have that trimmed, then you'll take it to your iron and you'll press this up. And then um, the next thing that I will do is I'm gonna come back in here and I'm gonna follow along the curve of this circle and I'm gonna trim off some of the inside of this fabric. Now it's going to be, um, it's going to be covered by our embroidery, but we just want to make sure that there's as little shadowing as possible. So I like to get rid of some of that. Now I've made sure to leave a good quarter of an inch there so that when I go to put my applique embroidery on top, in this case, just my sunshine, I'm not cutting that off. All right, the last thing I wanna show you is, okay, one more comment <laughs> before we move on to adding our yellow strip. You can either go ahead and add the quilting now, or you can add all of the strips, and then if you want, you can go back and add extra quilting. So you can see on this one, I really enjoy adding all the quilting, and I like to have each one, um, each ray be a different method of quilting. You can totally personalize this and make it any way you want. You could add all of the rays and then go back and do kind of an all over quilting, however it is you like. I typically go ahead and quilt the ray as I'm adding it. Um, so in this case, I would take this back to my machine and I would quilt the red one. And then usually I wait until I've added the second side before I add the quilting. So I would add the yellow and then I would quilt the orange. Then I'll add the green, quilt the yellow, and so it goes. 
All right, one last point I want to make. When you go to add your next ray, which in this case is going to be my yellow, there's a couple of things you wanna keep in mind. First, you need to be paying attention to where this ray covers your circle, kind of where it crosses. So you can't go beyond here. Now, the next thing you wanna pay attention to is the edge of your ray up here. So what I will do is I will come, I will keep in mind that I'm aiming for this circle, I will make sure that where it intersects here is crossing this circle by about a quarter of an inch. And then I'll make sure that I've lined up with this edge at least, you know. Um, now you can see that I can go as steep as this. I could go all the way, you know, I can, I can make that orange ray as much as wide or skinny as I want. So you can play with that. They are not all meant to be exactly even. That's kind of the nature of quilt as you go. It's kind of what I love about it. If you start with exactly the same um, width of strips, you're still gonna run into a little bit of variety of the edges as you're working with angles and stuff. It just tends to make things a little wonky. So my best suggestion is to just lean into the craziness of it and enjoy that they're all gonna be different widths and just have fun with it. Just play with it and see what you like. So you're paying attention to how it crosses over here, making sure you have plenty of seam allowance, making sure that you have yellow and orange both together. And the last piece of information you need to keep in the back of your mind is how much area do you need to cover with this particular color to make sure that you are keeping your rainbow fairly balanced. So I know that I have four colors that I need to have on this side. So I wanna make sure that I am making my orange one as wide as I can so that when I add my green one next over here, it's gonna be able to meet at about halfway. And again, you're gonna have big wedges kind of up in this corner. I'll show you here again that are going to be bigger than you have over here. So if that is something that you wanna to try to keep in mind, then you're gonna to wanna to make your red one, or especially your first one, maybe a lot bigger, so that as this ray comes out and expands to cover this whole corner, it's not quite as wide as it is here. So those are all some tips to keep in mind as you're adding your rays. This is a part to have fun, and again, this is why I really suggest playing around with it on this mug rug first because then you're not gonna be sad that you've spent all that time <laughs> sewing it. And it gives you a really good feel for how these angles as you're, as you're sewing and then flipping and, and how it looks and evolves as you go to add it because you're gonna look at this orange here and you're gonna think that's a really big piece of orange. But really once you add your yellow to it and then flip it over, it might not be quite as big as you think. So that is adding the Quilt As You Go rays to the Rainbow Sunshine Mini Quilt. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments. As always, you can send me a message on Instagram. My handle there is Amarini Designs. I will leave that in the description below as well. And I hope you guys are having lots of fun sewing along.